if I had the money, I would probably buy this chair. I think it's so fun. <laughs> I can't say a scrotum. Crafts, craftsmanship. Okay. If you have any interest in interior design, you have probably seen the resurgent of these many iconic sofas over the last few years. Though some of these, their rise to fame has been short-lived, we live in the age of, if it's popular by social media, the standards have automatically become cringe after a while. Because honestly, it's been used and posted everywhere and it eventually gets universally hated on no matter how cool it actually is. Now, we all have that sofa that isn't just a piece of furniture. It is the hub of relaxation, a gathering spot for families and friends, and a reflection of your personal style. But let's face it, not all sofas are created equal. When it comes to having effortless style and aesthetic that has stood the test of time, while others have left us scratching our heads wondering what the hell were you thinking? Today, we're gonna take a look at the most popular sofas and I'm gonna give you the breakdown on whether if I would consider them good, if they're worth the price and whether or not they are actually comfortable to sit in because at the end of the day, that's all we're looking for. Some of these have literally transformed interiors in the past and still today on really discussing on the ones that work well and honestly, the ones that really miss the mark. Welcome back to my channel. If you've not met me before, my name is Phoenix Gray, AKA Design Daddy. And on this page, we talk about all things interior design. I get it, we don't always have a big budget to work with, so that's why you have me to really help you make an informed decision on if it's worth it and if it's practical. Make sure to follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Mr. Phoenix Gray, where you can see all my daily design advice. You can also join my free design newsletter in the description box below, where I answer all of the most commonly asked interior design questions that you may have. From timeless classics to daring modern statements, the sofas of the past have significantly influenced the style that we have today. So let's take a look at where it all started. Let's start this off strong with a sofa you've all seen over social media, and it is the Toga Sofa by Michael DeCroix. This French designer created this modular system with the inspiration that came from a toothpaste tube. And honestly, that's not what I saw. It was supposed to be this inspiration, this idea of that it folded back on itself. And honestly, it was supposed to be a simple observation. Sorry, it's not giving a toothpaste vibe. I would have guessed the inspiration came from like a bug larva or something, but you know, that's just me. I personally have one of these sofas, so I'm going to give you an honest and a biased review. The real question that a lot of people have asked when they see it in my home is if it is actually comfortable. And I am so happy to report that it 1000% is. It's basically a giant foam chair and the design is meant to actually envelop you. This high quality foam makes it actually super relaxing to sink into. The unique design provides a really bold statement in any room that it's placed in and it creates an instant focal point no matter what finish that it's made in. The artistic flair of the sofa can really work in a bunch of different styles, whether it's contemporary, bohemian, or even just that rustic look. The finishes really play off so many interior design styles. I'm giving it points for versatility as well because the level of customization it has, you can really arrange it in so many different modules in various configurations to really suit the space and the needs that you need in your own home. This flexibility makes it adaptable to so many different room layouts and interior design styles, especially with the modern day space and condos where you may not have that standard room for a two or three seater, modular is now king. Now that I've hyped it up, we're gonna tear this bitch down. With the relaxed look and low profile to the floor, even though it's comfortable, it also means that it lacks lumbar support and it's really easy to get sucked into. If you're tall like me, getting out of such a low profile sofa means you have to literally roll out of it because your knees are past that 90 degree mark. I don't know about you, but my knees do not bend like they used to when I was young. So this is one major flaw. It's quilted design also makes cleaning and maintenance a little bit challenging. Dust and debris accumulate within the crevices, requiring extra effort to really keep the sofa looking its best and cleaning in between those ridges, which you didn't think you would have to do for a sofa because it is honestly kind of awkward. I don't know how regular people are cleaning their sofas, but the likelihood of you finding last month's popcorn somewhere under there is a high probability. 
The Togo sofa's iconic status and high quality construction means it comes with a hefty price tag. It's considered a luxury piece which might be out of reach or budget for the conscious consumers. A single seat without the ottoman usually start about $2,600, which let's be real is pretty steep for the average person for a single seat. Especially with dupes on the market for going less than half that, I can see why it's become so popular. Overall, I'm gonna rate it a seven out of 10 because I personally love it. It's such a fun shape and works well as a really unique accent. The reason I'm giving it a lower rating is that it is not meant for anyone under the age of 25 who may have back issues because it is literally like sitting on the floor and getting back up might not be worth it because you're gonna have to struggle. My back. Oh, my back! The next one is often nicknamed the Bellini Sofa after its Italian creator, Mario Bellini. This is one of those that you see so overly saturated on socials lately, and I get it. Everyone in their cat has one of these, and I can see why. The endless adaptable nature of the sofa system that he designed for the B&B Italia in, I think it was like 1970, is probably one of the most customizable sofas out there. The modules of fabric covered polyurethane hook together make everything super simple, integrating latches to create endless amounts of configurations from sectionals to armchairs, to ottomans to daybeds, really earning itself a place and a notable inspiration for modern furniture that honestly makes it really cool to customize to your desired needs in your space. Quality has always been at the top of the list when it comes to Italian fabrication, so I cannot deny that for these furniture pieces. It's geometric form and precision craftsmanship. Craftsmanship. Did I say crap yeah. craftsmanship? <laughs> it's geometric form and precise craftsmanship really make a statement piece that adds a touch of sophistication to any living space. Once again, the sofa is extremely versatile. Despite its modern and minimalist appearance, the Bellini sofa's design allows it to blend seamlessly into a variety of interior design styles. I personally love a deep sofa, and honestly, this is not it. The cushion depth is minimal, so it's not meant to be an actual lounging sofa. Yes, it's got a super sleek appearance, but the shallow design really impacts the comfort level, so keep that in mind. Another drawback is the firmness of these cushions itself. While the design may look super soft, the design of this sofa actually really prioritizes the structure and the seating experience, which is definitely not suited for everyone's preference making it a very formal overall aesthetic, especially when you're sitting on it. The price as well also can deter the average person. For one of these sofas, a three-piece model starts at around $15,000 for a legit one. For the Bellini sofa, I'm gonna give it a five out of 10 because of the limited level of comfort on these just doesn't really equate to the price that it's worth. These sofas are designed to be shown off and not really sat in. So if you really like them, keep that in mind because they really have that formal design to that style. So if you're not going to be able to snuggle and cuddle on one of these, which is honestly important for me, it's gonna be a pass. Once again, this is another popular sofa that has been duped absolutely everywhere. So keep that in mind if you're looking for a sofa like this and wanna get a dupe of it, make sure that whatever fabricator makes them, that these top pieces are actually customizable because I've seen a lot of them stuck in place and it really defeats the purpose of its versatility. This one I have comments on because it's definitely not for everyone and it's definitely not for me, but I'm gonna give you the breakdown anyways, or at least try to. The Terrazzo sofa was designed in like 1970s around the same time by Obal Klug. This was meant to be inspired by a terrace landscape, but it literally looks like the poop emoji if I'm being honest. Like, that is literally the definition of what it looks like. Listen, I have always been a fan of sculptural and unique pieces, but this one just takes it to another level, even though it has been gaining popularity and I feel like it's gonna have a resurgence of vintage, just like these other ones. If we're going for that artistic flair and that irregular asymmetrical design, I'm gonna give it bonus points here because it truly does not look like anything else you will ever see, and it literally makes a statement, even if it's just a poop emoji. Being a modular sofa, this allows for so many creative layouts, and the different heights allow for people to sit at different heights to really have that almost pit-like seating arrangement without being a seating pit. Being an unconventional design, this really impacts 
the practicality of seating. The size of these sofas are really big. Like I'm telling you twice the size of a regular couch, but the different levels really limit to how many people can even sit on it versus having a sleek flat surface that you can fit more people on. Like I said, this is a very large sofa, which means the size is probably not ideal for most people's spaces. You definitely need to have a much larger room to even consider having one of them. Another downside to this sofa is that it really doesn't allow you to work with many interior design styles. It doesn't have the same versatility as the other sofas offer to really have an artistic approach. It categorizes you to a very pigeonholed look. I'm probably gonna get some hate from the hardcore designers on here, but I'm giving it three. The only three points are for how unique and fun it actually is. Don't get me wrong, it's beautifully put together, but I feel like kids will love it more than the average person. If you have the space for one of these and like the funky shape, go for it, but make sure you measure ahead of time because it is enormous. This one I haven't seen duped as much on the furniture market, probably because it's not nearly as popular as the other sofas. But I know so many fabricators out there that could make this at a much more affordable price point if that's what you're looking for. Restoration hardware I know is going to come from my head on this one, but let's talk about the cloud sofa. We've all seen it, we've all seen it all over socials. Restoration hardware introduced the sofa in like the late 2010s, and it is still a new kid of the block compared to the rest of the sofas, but it's still gets a review. This became super popular over the last few celebrity homes that featured in Architectural Digest and big influencers that have posted about having the sofa that is literally a bed. The Cloud Sofa lives up to its name by offering unparalleled comfort, it's deep, the plush cushions are generous, and the seating space really create an almost sinking like cloud effect. If you prioritize comfort above all else when it comes to a sofa, this is exactly what you want. Each piece is oversized, and once again, it is a modular sofa that really allows you to create ample lounging space. I can appreciate the fact that Restoration Hardware always allows you to customize these pieces, showing performance fabrics versus that white linen that they usually have on display in their showrooms that always looks dirty. To me, it sounds like an absolute nightmare to have a white sofa, unless you have one of those formal sitting rooms that literally no one actually sits in. Despite its plush appearance, the cloud sofa's clean lines and simple design enable it to fit into various interior design styles. From contemporary to traditional, it can really be styled with a mountain of pillows that you can get lost in. Once again, we've now built her up. We need to tear this bitch down again because if you love this sofa or have been thinking about it, you probably going to reconsider after this. The cloud sofa's generous proportion might be a challenge to fit in literally any living space. Its oversized design could really overwhelm a compact room. So if you're thinking about this, by God, please make sure you measure and tape it out because I've seen so many videos of people that have purchased these, brought them into their home, and the entire room, and I'm telling literally wall to wall, is just sofa bed. Yes, it sounds like a vibe, but honestly, it gives a whole new meaning to losing something in the sofa because it's literally going to disappear and you're never gonna find it again. It's gonna be like a Narnia portal down there. <sighs> These cushions are also filled with down, so if you are a vegan, this could also not be a great choice for you. The upholstery material requires frequent fluffing to maintain and keep this sofa looking its best. Otherwise, it ends up looking like this. It literally looks like a saggy, mess. If you want it to look informal, then it's perfect. But in my opinion, it's always going to look sloppy. And who in their right mind is fluffing up a sofa every time they get out? Like, it's just not going to happen if we're being honest. Oh yeah, I guess I would. Honestly, I would probably do it, but that's my own, that's my own thing. <laughs> While it's comfortable to lounge in, it does lack any structural support when it comes. It's almost too soft, which I know you would never think you'd hear, but it is a problem. If you prefer a more upright position, this is not for you. Like no posture is required if you have one of these and you'll always wonder why your back is gonna hurt. For the cloud sofa, I'm gonna give it a rating of five. I'm gonna be very generous to restoration hardware here. It got bonus points for the level of comfort. Trust me, I did not wanna get out of one of these when I was actually in it and I can see why it's really gained so much popularity being one of the best lounge sofas on the market. This sofa is not a furniture item for your home that should have a level of maintenance 
that it does. This requires so much upkeep. Like I said before, it's literally going to look like a saggy mess. The only time I have ever pictured one of these sofas is like in the Hamptons at the summer house. And even then they start at $15,000. So this is the only house that it's probably going to be in, in my opinion. Once again, this is another really popular one for the market that has been duped by practically every supplier out there. But be warned, a lot of these dupes will look the same that will not have the same cloud-like effect that you think because they're going to be cotton versus downfilled, which is going to give you a more chunky look than that saggy soft. In the world of interior design, sofas are more than just pieces of furniture. They're a reflection of your personal style, their comfortable havens, and conversation starters. We've talked about some of the most iconic ones out there, but let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you, Brody's gonna pile those together. There's probably another 10 I could really go off on. So if you have a really popular duped sofa or one of those iconic ones that you like, let me know in the comments and I will add it to the next review. Be sure to like this video and if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on Instagram and TikTok for all my daily design advice at Mr. Phoenix Gray. And remember, if you're ever second guessing yourself, just think, what would Design Daddy do? Boom. Done. Ugh.